we are pitting the DJI M30T against the brand new Autel Evo Max 4T. We're gonna talk all about the specs. Don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we are talking about the DJI M30T. I've talked a lot about that drone extensively. There are a bunch of videos, you should check those out. But we're also talking about the brand new Autel Evo Max 4T. Now these are two drones that by the specs look very, very similar. And I'll be honest, I have not had a chance to fly the Autel Evo Max 4T yet. I have flown the M30T. But what we're gonna do today is just walk through the specs one by one, and we'll talk about what each of these drones have to offer. So maybe Maybe by the end you'll have an idea of which drone is right for you but before we get started we got to thank the sponsor of today's video and that is autopilot autopilot is an app that allows you to get faa lance approval on the spot for your flight missions but you can also schedule it in advance so say i want to fly next sunday i can schedule it on that date the exact times that i want to fly and i can get approval in advance so the autopilot app really is quick and easy literally takes you seconds to download the app and also takes you seconds to get faa approval now this is a product we actually use ourselves so we wouldn't be recommending it if we didn't actually believe in it we really do use the autopilot app and we think you should too so check it out autopilot.io or you can click the link in the description below. But now onto the subject at hand, let's compare the DJI M30T against the Autel Evo Max 4T. Here we go. All right, first up, let's talk about portability. Now, both of these drones are foldable. Both of them are medium-sized drones. You can fit them in a hard case. You can fit them in a backpack. So they are very, very portable. Now, speaking of the size of these drones, the Autel Evo Max 4T kind of comes in between the size of a DJI Mavic and in between the size of an M30T. So it's right in the middle somewhere uh, in terms of size. But both of these drones, very portable. You can get both of them up in the air in less than a minute. All right, next up, let's talk about thermal capabilities. Both of these drones have high resolution 640 by 512 thermal sensors on them. You are gonna be able to see heat signatures in the middle of the night. Now, in terms of image quality of the thermal sensor, uh, which one of these drones is better? Well, I'm not really sure. They both have the same resolution. They both are gonna be really crisp and clear. But as I said, I haven't had a chance to fly the Autel Evo Max 4T yet, so I haven't been able to do a comparison, but they are both gonna have really high resolution, really good looking thermal from 400 feet up in the air. Both of these drones have wide angle cameras. The Autel drone actually has a 50 megapixel camera where the DJI drone has a 12 megapixel camera on it. Now, what are these wide angle cameras used for? Well, they can be used for a couple of things. One is just getting your bearings. Say you are in your zoom camera, you're zoomed in really far and you've lost your bearings. You're not exactly sure which way you're pointing where you're at. You can pop out to the wide angle camera and that's gonna give you a good idea of where you are. But those wide angle cameras are typically used for mapping as well. So if you're somebody that does a lot of mapping, both of these these drones are capable of making great maps. Both of these drones have fantastic zoom ranges on them. The Autel Evo Max 4T has a 10 times optical zoom and a 160 times digital zoom. So that one is really great. You're gonna be able to get right in there uh, for like inspection work or search and rescue. The M30T actually has a 16 times optical zoom and a 200 times digital zoom. So you definitely are getting more reach with the M30T. Laser rangefinders. that's right, these drones both have laser rangefinders on them. So say you're pointing at a building and you need to get the exact GPS location of that building, uh, it can tell you the exact GPS location of that building with the laser rangefinder. So it can be a great tool depending on what you're using it for, but for like search and rescue, it makes a lot of sense because they can point to an area and drop a pin there and know exactly where they need to go back to look or give that information to somebody on the ground who can then go to that GPS location and find whoever they're looking for. All right, let's talk about FPV cameras. The M30T has an FPV camera, so it is locked. It is on the drone itself. It's not part of the gimbal, and it is always looking straight. Why is that camera important? Well, in case your gimbal goes out for some reason, say it malfunctions and completely goes out, you have no vision through your gimbal or through any of its cameras, you do then have that FPV camera that will at least get you home. It's also used in the dual controller setup when you got two remotes. Now, the Autel Evo Max 4T does not have an FPV camera camera. So no FPV camera on the Autel Evo Max 4T. So you are relying solely on that gimbal. 
Now, both of these drones have great flight times. The Evo Max 4T comes in with a 42 minute flight time. The M30T comes in with a 41 minute flight time. So approximately the same. Realistically, you're probably gonna get about 35 minutes of flight time out of both of these drones. And with extra batteries, it's enough to keep you going all day long. Speaking of going all day long, both of these drones have hot swappable batteries. Now the M30T has two batteries, so that's easy to hot swap. You just take one out, put a new one in, take the other one out, put a new one in. Drone never has to turn off and it goes straight back up in the air. With the Autel Evo Max 4T, it only has one battery. So you can land, you pop that battery out, put a new one in and it stays on the entire time. There's an internal battery inside of the drone that allows it to stay on long enough for you to pop in a new battery. So that way you can hot swap it. Again, you land, hot swap that battery, take it right back in the air. You're saving a lot of time not having to reboot the drone. Now, both of these drones are really, really fast. With the Autel drone in ludicrous mode, it's gonna go 51 miles an hour. With the DJI drone in sport mode, it's also gonna go 51 miles an hour. Hopefully, you're not always flying in ludicrous and in sport mode, respectively, because that does turn off a bunch of the sensors and makes it more dangerous to fly. Both of these drones are RTK enabled. What does RTK mean? It stands for real-time kinematics, but what it really means is it's GPS on steroids. It's gonna give you centimeter level accuracy on your maps. It's gonna give you more stability if you're around a lot of electromagnetic interference, a bunch of buildings. Uh, it's gonna make your flights more stable. Now you're gonna need a base station or you're gonna need to be able to log into a public RTK broadcast system. Uh, usually you have to have some sort of a subscription for that, but that is also available to you. But both of these these drones are capable of RTK as long as you have the proper hardware. They both have smart controllers. The Autel smart controller has a little bit bigger screen, uh, but they are both big and beefy and bulky. You don't wanna drop either one of them, so I suggest a lanyard for either one of these remotes. But both of them are packed with features. I wouldn't say one is better than the other, and I have had the chance to use the Autel smart controller. They are both fantastic, and nobody's gonna be disappointed because you've got that giant screen that you can see really, really well in bright sunlight. So both of these drones, great smart controllers. All right, let's talk obstacle avoidance. Now the DJI M30T, it has sensors all around it, 360 degrees, there's sensors everywhere. It's gonna tell you if something is close to you. It's gonna tell if you're getting ready to run into something. Basically 360 degrees, you are protected. But Autel, they kick it up to 11. They've got 720 degree obstacle avoidance. That's right, you're not getting anywhere close to this drone without the drone knowing that you're close. So both of them have great obstacle avoidance, but the Autel apparently has better obstacle avoidance. We'll find that out when we get a chance to actually test it. But here's the thing with the sensors, don't always trust them. They are great. They do a good job of protecting your drone, but fly smart. Don't get used to counting on those sensors to make sure you're not flying into something. Fly smart, use your eyes, use your head. Uh, and those sensors are just there as like a seat belt, just in case things go wrong. Geofencing. Now, if you don't know, DJI does something called geofencing. They actually have areas around the country that you just can't fly unless you get it unlocked through DJI. This is separate from, from getting FAA approval to fly somewhere. So say you're at like a government building, they may block that off from you flying uh, because it may not be safe for you to fly there. So that's up to DJI and you have to get that unlocked. Now Autel, while their drones are capable of the whole geofencing thing, they haven't actually activated it. So right now, Autel drones are not geofenced. You can essentially go anywhere and get your drone up in the air and Autel will not be stopping you from making that flight. Again, the Autel drones are capable of that and that might be something they do in the future, but as of right now, the Autel drones are not geofenced. Both of these drones are weather resistant. You can fly them in the rain, you can fly them in the snow without having to worry about it. And they each have operating temperatures from negative four to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So really there's not a lot of situations where these drones aren't gonna be able to fly, especially with the weather rating. All right, so another really important category is dual controllers. That's right. 
The M30T has something called dual controllers. You can use two remotes. One remote can be with a pilot. The other remote can be with a camera operator. So the pilot doesn't have to worry about getting the shot. Uh, he can just focus on flying and he's using the FPV camera that we talked about earlier. So it is a lock camera and he uses that just to fly. Whereas the other person that is using the second remote can control the gimbal fully. They have full control of the camera. They can focus on doing what they're doing. You can also use it for what's called a handoff. So I could be flying the drone here, two miles away, my partner's there. Once the drone gets into his line of sight, he can then take over control of the drone. It's just a way to give you a little bit more range in the, the ground that you're able to cover. Now the Autel Evo Max 4T does not have dual controllers at this point. You can just use the one remote. Uh, I heard a rumor that that might be something coming down the line is some form of dual controller it would have to be different. You couldn't have one doing the pilot and one controlling a camera because there is no FPV camera on the Autel drone. So it would have to just be for something like a handoff or using that second remote at like home base, uh, like a base station that you guys have set up. You could hook it up to a big monitor and then you would also be able to see uh, the feed coming from the drone. So dual controllers is a great thing. Hopefully the Autel drone will get that in the future, but it is really awesome on the M3T. All right, now it's time for the moment of truth, the price. What do these drones actually cost? Well, the DJI M30T has a base price of $14,000. Now, once you add extra batteries and like a speaker spotlight and some other things, you're gonna get closer to $16,000, $17,000. With the Autel Evo Max 4T, it's coming in at $9,000. That is an incredible price for everything that this drone offers. And like I said, I haven't had a chance to fly the Autel Evo Max 4T yet, but if it lives up to the specs that they're putting out there, it is gonna be a real competitor to the M30T. We're told it's gonna be the end of April or sometime in May when we're actually gonna get one in our hands. And at that time, I'll do a full review of that drone. I'm really, really excited to get that one because uh, I've been looking forward to this for a couple of months since they announced it. All right, I wanna thank all of you guys for stopping by. If you're interested in purchasing either of these drones, the Autel Evo Max 4T or the DJI M30T, please give us a call. Our contact info is on your screen and it's also down below in the description. So make sure you reach out to us if you wanna buy one of these drones. We have to thank Autopilot for sponsoring this video. Make sure you go to their website and download their app. And we appreciate you guys for stopping by. We'll see you next time.